I've appreciated how you've seemed to approach the new league, the PLL, and their launch in September and their plans, and also just the reality of players migrating towards that league. And I think we saw, and you spoke to it, that the Bayhawks didn't deal or haven't dealt with as much of that migration as other teams because of how you've treated players going back, I mean, as, as long as you've been here. Yeah. How do you now view that as another, I would imagine, I don't want to say hurdle, but something that you're going to have to, to navigate through no. moving forward? So the first part I'll say is any league, I mean, any league you have the Patriots or the Steelers, okay? And mm -hmm. Steelers are the most successful franchise in the NFL, right? So... I'm here with them, right? So you're going to have the Steelers, and that's who we feel like we are in the, in the pro lacrosse. I don't care what league it is, right? Uh, that's who we are. Uh, and then you have the Cleveland Browns, right? Yeah. So not everybody's going to be the Steelers, right? Mm -hmm. And I think you go to hockey and basketball and see the same thing over and over again, right? Not everyone's the Lakers or the Celtics. So, you know, you're not going to have just – it's impossible for everyone's expectation to be 12 teams all exactly the same, all exactly the same best, best – Common practice, mm -hmm. best teams, like best win. You, you can't, well, not everybody can win ring every year. Yeah, no, I hear <laughs> so you. So it's natural because of that. It's impossible. So it's, it's called competition. Um, so I'm never afraid of the competition. Mm -hmm. so, the, so Paul's League is not something that, um, that I see as competition at any level mm -hmm. uh, for, for two major things. One, obviously, one is I have a tremendous amount of respect for Paul yeah. uh, as a player, and I've always had a good relationship going back way before I owned a team yeah. and coaching against them in Ocean City with our SmartLink teams, yeah. right? Go way back with both yeah. those guys. Um, so, look, they're, they were me when I was 30, right? Their entrepreneurship, their entrepreneurship brains are going, and, you know, they're fired up, and they see this passion for it. So how, how can I be angry Mm -hmm. with guys that are passionate, want to be entrepreneurs, and about it. Do I agree with all the things you're doing? No, I don't, right? So, you know, I, I, I actually went and met with Paul and Mike a couple mm -hmm. times, um, had great conversations with them, you know, and I, I was, would love to see those guys buy a franchise in the MLL. Yeah. I think that would have been their passion is what needs, was what pro lacrosse needs are passion. Uh, and Paul has obviously done some things different than the average lacrosse player with what he's accomplished on his own. So if he could have brought some of the things and expertise he brought into the MLL, where would we be today would be a lot better spot than where Pro Lacrosse is today, which is no matter how you're going to skin it, it's going to be divided for a while. Yeah. All right. So, um, and, you know, the claim to fame, who has the best players? Well, you know, I know there was an announcement that Miles had gone to the league, but every player in the MLL is under contract until February 28th. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know how anyone could sign anything and go to another league, That's which was a big announcement last week, right? So, and I can tell you, Miles and I are, are, are not done negotiating. So, 